And we're back with some Master of Orion 2 Battle at Interes. Now, before we do some very broken stuff with this old game, I, I should give you some context. This game was released in 1996, like 28 years-ish ago. It was originally designed for MS-DOS, which, for those of you who are too young to know what that means, it was basically a black box command line thing where you had to type everything. There was no mouse. No, none of that stuff. You just typed in commands to get stuff done. That's as horrifying as, as it sounds. You can just go to the start menu in Windows and just type in uh, CMD, and it'll bring you up the black box. That was, that was all you had. That was all you had to work with. But this was upgraded to work with Windows 95 before it was released. And to say this game is seminal is... Oh, that'd be... It's not just seminal. This thing has influenced so much. You're going to know a bunch of the stuff this thing has influenced, because I'm going to point it out. Uh, we'll just... Uh, I'll show you a little bit of this to start. This is probably what everyone would have started on. They like giant maps. You, you want to go with a huge, where is it? No, large cluster, huge maps. Huge maps were always the, the rate. They're just far more fun to do. Now you can make, you could pick your pre-starter races. Like for example, you got the Alarians who are a bunch of telepathic people who go around taking people over and, you know, capturing their stuff and they're really good at fighting, but they pretty much suck at everything else. Uh, or you could play as the Cylons who are just super techie, but low gravity weaklings. So, really good at science and things. Uh, then you've got your humans who just suck in general and are there to get beaten up on by everyone else because they're uh, charismatics who are, you know, good at trade and things and, and no one cares and they just end up getting murdered every single time. However, we'll just do a quick start here and I'll, before we get into a real game and I'll show you what you're supposed to do before we do all the things that you really, really should do if you actually want to win at this game. So, first up, this is where you start as Sol. It'll always be Sol. Uh, this is a planet you can settle on. This is a planet you can settle on. Max population 4, max population 1. That means nothing to you, but if it doesn't have a population that can support at least 8 plus, it's probably terrible. Though, considering how hard it is with this race, you'd probably settle for a 4 planet. Anyway, these are gas giants. Can't do anything with them yet. But later on, you can terraform those. This game is uh, pretty open-ended. While the graphics are... Okay, dated is uh, being generous, but uh, blocks is, is probably closer. Anyway, let's go into our colony screen. We have one colony, and these people here, each one of those is 100,000 people. Or you can call them a million, whichever you prefer, but it's 100,000 people in general. Now, let's uh, actually go down to the colony itself and have a look at it. And this is the height of graphical fidelity back in the day. That's your capital building. Uh, that's some housing units. That's a marine barracks that produces marines that defend the planet. There's the marines down there in the corner. Yeah, this is, uh, Okay. I'm just going to go over some of the basic mechanics of how you're supposed to play this, and then we're just going to not do it that way because it's a bad idea. First off, we're going to look here. This six produ six production by workers. Total industry produced six. If we take away one worker, we end up with three production because we only have one person working. Each one produces three, so this one produces six. This one should produce nine, but then you get these weird radioactive looking symbols. This is called pollution. And this is the first mechanic that they will use to control how you play. Um... Every time you add someone to production, there's a, a pollution limit. As in, the more you produce, the more likely you are to produce some pollution. And the size of the planet, there's a whole bunch of hidden things in the background, but depending on the size of the planet and a bunch of other stuff, will determine how much pollution you make. So even though we're producing 12, we're losing 3 of it to pollution, meaning we're only getting 9 production. And what this is meant to, to force you to do is to not whiplash people between different departments. There's only 3. One is food, one is production, and one is science. So it might be like, oh, I want to research this new technology, get a shiny new ship, and then you're like, okay, cool, now I want to build it and put everyone into production. That's a bad idea. What you want to do is start building something and have that thing building for ages while you're doing the science, and you don't want to waste any of that production. So you see the science here, there's no pollution on science. You can just keep putting people into science, and you'll just keep getting more. And we get plus three for each of them, and it doesn't matter how many you put in, you just get that plus three, and it doesn't go away. So science is one of those things you can dump people into. But the production limit is is how they force you not to just whiplash people back and forth. Uh, let's just queue something up here. Let's say, well, queue up a colony ship. You use this to colonize other planets. And a colony ship would take 84 turns. You have no context for that, but that is a really, really long time. A scout ship would take six turns. A, uh, let's see, a battleship would take 152 turns. Yeah, it can be over by then, buddy. Like, just no. That's, uh, this is terrible. You would... You would never really want to play the humans, they're just that bad. But by and large, you would never actually come into this screen. The thing is, this screen is, is useful, it shows you what other planets are in system and things like that, but you very rarely come in here. What you would normally do is go into this, it's just the building queue. This is just to queue up buildings and that's all you really need. Uh, there's even an auto build function where it will queue up whatever you want. There's a whole bunch of other stuff we'll have to go through as we uh, play it. 
But I just want to point out some of the, the reasons why this game is, is just is burned into the brains of pretty much everyone who's played it. This here is the tech tree, and we will get into the insanity of the tech tree later. Let's just say this is biology. And there's two options there, three in the next level, then three in the next, and then there, there's another page of them. There, there's so much tech in this game. It, it had more tech than any game I've ever played before when I first played this one. But let's go down here into the power list and we'll see there's high energy focus. This is allows ships to channel the fire of its energy weapons more efficiently, increasing damage by 50% over base regardless of range. Basically 50% increase to all your beam damage, beam weapons damage. Strange that. Do you remember Star Sector? Uh, anyone, anyone play this game? Is it quite popular? Well, relatively popular. Uh, this is a list of all the ship systems you can get in there, like uh, accelerated ammo feeders and burn drives. And high energy focus. I wonder what high energy focus does. Increases weapon damage by 50% for three seconds. Huh, very similar. Same name, same text. That's a, that's a little bit unusual. Fast missile racks. What does that do? Has a one second wind up, resets cooldowns of all missile weapons on the ship to zero. Oh, would you look at that? Fast missile racks. Allows a ship to fire two volleys of missiles in one turn. We'll only fire once per turn after that unless the ship takes one full turn without firing missiles to reload. Strange. Is that a phasing cloak I see before me? Allows ship to temporarily enter another dimension instead of just visually disappearing. While cloaked, the ship cannot be detected or attacked. Can only function for ten turns. Yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that'll show up in Star Sector or a bunch of other games you've played. E even some of the names, like the names of things, the actions of things, a whole bunch of these show up in places. And a whole bunch of the mechanics, the influence games from Stellaris to, oh, God knows what. All right, let's just uh, check something out here. Uh, this is the research laboratory. How long would it take to research that? 22 turns. That's a oh, very long time. Also... Unlike most games that I'd played up until that point, if you take the research lab, you can't get the other options. Like the Dauntless Guidance Systems and the Optronic Computer, you do not research them. You cannot go back and research them. They are gone forever. The only other way to obtain those is to spy on other people if they've researched it and steal it off them. So this made it very, very difficult when you were choosing things. In fact, it gets even worse than that. Just say you research Murky Light Missiles. Very good. Very good upgrade for your ships as well. You would really want to get your hands on those. Uh, the problem is the moment you get them, they're terrible. They will take up buttons of space on your ships, and you can't equip a lot of them, and they do very little damage. If you want to use the Murky Light Missiles, you have to miniaturize them. How do you miniaturize things? Well, what you do is you research the next level of tech in that same field. So you put another level into chemistry and you grab one of these ones, whichever ones you want, maybe even pulse on missiles. And then you have to go into nanotechnology, which is the one above it. And once you get to this level, this will have miniaturized them enough that you can cost efficiently fit them on your ships. Plus they will unlock some other things like mirror of warheads and a few other things that make them actually useful. This meant that if you wanted to pick a new weapon for your ships, you had to plan like... 40 or 50 turns in advance. Plus, by the time you refit your ships with the weapons and got them back to the front line, it was so far ahead, you just had to plan it miles in advance. It made this game, well, amazing. Let, let, but let's let's do it the broken way. I, I don't like trying to play it fair against the AI because the AI doesn't play fair against us. Now, there are several broken ways to play this. Like, uh, there's the Beam Blitzer variant where you just, like, come in and attack people straight away by building a few Beam ships and just assimilate the, the entire universe. But the other preferred one is to go with a pre-warp build, a huge map, at least. Yeah, give me huge. Yeah, I think huge is the best way to go. Eight players, impossible, average. You can't go higher than impossible. Starts at Tudor, goes all the way up to impossible. This game is available on Steam. I think it's not available on GOG or something like that. Took me forever to figure out how to get to record this with OBS, but whatever. Now, all of these races, which one is the best? None. Custom. You want to go with custom. And one good thing about custom is you can pick whichever profile picture you want. Uh, I suppose it's got to be the Illyrians. They look the coolest. Right. Now this, this is where you get to design your species. So we'll just uh, clear the current ones. The uh, the Illyrians, they're telepathic, which gives them a whole bunch of bonuses. They can basically mind read other people, which gives them a diplomacy bonus. And if they're attacked, but really the only reason you want it, if you attack and kill a fleet in orbit around a planet that someone has, instead of having to invade the planet with troops, you can just mind control them all and say, you are all my people. And they go, we are all your people. And then the whole planet is yours and everything on it. Really cuts down on the damage you do during uh, an occupation. But we're going to uh, clear all of this. Oh, but the worst thing is they're feudal. Feudal is brutal. You can make a feudal government work. It's just very hard. Ship costs are reduced by one third, so cheaper planets. That's great. Uh, you get more troops. Uh, yeah, but all scientist research generated is uh, reduced by 50%. In other words, you only get 50% 
as much research as everyone else. And that is just horrifying. Tech is king. So let's clear all of this and uh, go through the stuff you really that really does not matter at all. First one is repulsive. Minus six. You can go up to minus ten points. So just say we get that one for minus six. Uh, we'll go feudal for minus four. We're not going to keep that. But then you'll notice we can't go any other minuses. Reason being, minus ten is the most you can go on anything. So, repulsive is just a no-brainer. The reason being is it means you can't do any diplomatic actions with other races. When you're playing on impossible difficulty, all the other races get amped up, which means they get extra traits on top of them, and usually about 50% of them take repulsive to counteract all the pluses they're going to get. Which means no one's going to be able to... Your diplomacy skills are going to be even more nerfed because it's kind of pointless. So you're better off just being repulsive to start, and it makes it even harder for people to declare war on you because they can't do any diplomacy stuff and make demands of you. Normally what happens, people make demands of you, and then if you don't meet those demands, they then attack you. But if they can't make demands of you, they just tend to attack you less. So this actually turns out to be a positive in a lot of respects. And it gives you six points to play around with. Then you also want to go with ground combat negative. If someone has broken through your fleet and is attacking you, you're usually in a lot of trouble to start with. And then ship defense. Uh, the AI is going to have a bonus against attacking you anyway, so you, they're not going to miss you. You're, you're going to get hammered no matter what you do, so you might as well just embrace it. And that's minus 10 points. And then what we're going to do is some truly just the, 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 my favorite broken build in this game. Unification is one of the most powerful ones. One, it gives you a 50% bonus to all your food production, which is kind of important. But more importantly, it gives you 50% bonus to all of your industrial production. Kind of huge. And then over here we have Tolerant. Basically gets rid of pollution. That whole pollution thing I mentioned gets rid of it entirely, meaning you can whiplash back and forth and things. That is hugely important, but it costs 10 whole points. This used to originally cost 8 points when they first released the game. People, then they realized how broken it was and they released a patch. This is in 1996. They released patches to update this game. How amazing is that? Also, Creative used to be six points, and creative gives you all the technologies. When you research something, instead of getting just one tech, you get all of them. By the time you get to the end of the game, you're just an unstoppable godlike race of killing machines who have access to all of the greatest technology in the galaxy. Assuming you have enough planets still to produce the necessary stuff, you should become unstoppable. But normally, yeah, everyone's raffle stomped the world before that really becomes a problem. Now, this leaves us with four points left over, and what we're going to do is go with industrial production. This gives us plus one production point on all of our people. However... Because we have unification, that gives us a 50% bonus on top of that, so it's actually a 1.5 production bonus. Yeah, this, this is well-tuned. And because tolerance used to be, like, two points less, it used to be, like, a rich homeworld on top of that as well, which would give us a massive bonus to production. But since it's a patch, it's, I'm afraid, a large homeworld is as good as we can get. And that's the race. Seems very simplistic, but it gets really broken really quickly. The time has come to unleash the blue bunnies on the world. All shall tremble in fear. Uh, enter the ruler's name. The ruler's name shall be Queedy, ruler of the blue bunnies. And we're going to go with blue. Uh, the reason I go with blue is it actually changes all the ship types, so your ships look different depending on it. Uh, whoa. I wanted to change our home system name. Can I? Oh, damn it. Looks like we're stuck with Draconis. I would have preferred something a little bit more, you know, strikes fear into the heart of your enemies, and oh, we're in a corner. I mean, it's not that I don't... Corners are okay. It's just we're going to have very limited expansion options. All right. We're going to immediately put everyone into workers. Uh... Namely because we don't have to worry about pollution. If we check in here, we'll see that we have 30 production. Five produced by, or sorry, four produced by each worker. Then they get a one bonus because, well, three, three because they're a worker, one because of our plus one production bonus from our you know, stats, and then a plus two bonus because we get a 50% production bonus because of our government type, giving us six per person. Eh, something like that. Anyway, we've got 30 going on, which is absolutely incredible. Also, at the same time, it takes less people working on farming, so we're sorted all the way around. And the first thing we're going to do is produce ourselves a colony base. Colony bases basically colonizes the local planet in your system. Now, how many local planets do we have? Just the one. Ten max pop abundant. You know what? That's actually pretty good. The fact that it's radiated gives it a maintenance penalty. Oh. But we'll survive. You can't uh, grow any food on those planets either. Technology-wise, we have nothing. Lit literally nothing. We're in actually pre-space warp. We can't make freighters, we can't make spaceships, we can't make anything. First thing we're going to get is electronic computers. Oh, actually no. First thing we're going to get is freighters. Uh, the reason we want to get our hands on freighters is they allow us to transport uh, food between colonies, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. But for now, we're going to produce a colony base. It takes seven turns. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And boom, we can now produce a colony locally. Even though we don't have space travel, we're somehow able to 
create a space colony on the local planet. I mean, kind of works. Uh, that place is immediately going to start producing housing. Housing is the most broken ability in this game, or the broken production thing. It's basically there that if you've got nothing else to do, you can produce housing, which increases population growth. Which is awesome. And the more production you have, the more population growth you get. Now, plus, right now we're getting plus 92k. Oh, it's actually a million pop. Yeah. So once we've generated a million, which is going to be like, oh, a thousand in this because it's all in thousands there. So once you've developed uh, that 92, say in about 10, 11 cycles from now, we'll actually get another population will be birthed here. So it's basically just like a population growth planet. That's its only purpose. Oh, for now, anyway. Uh, these guys can all move into research. We can whiplash them back and forth because we don't we were tolerant and we don't care about pollution. At the same time, we, uh, we get a bonus from being tolerant. If we go under info, we go under race statistics and we right click tolerant. It tells us races that are environmentally tolerant are to treat all planets environments as Terran for purposes of maximum population. Meaning we can cram even more people onto a planet. They can all produce. We don't have to worry about pollution. Yeah, this is going to get out of control pretty quick. Uh, one downside right now is we've got this minus one freighters. This is because freighters are used to transport, transport food between planets. And since we don't have any freighters, we can't transport food. And we can't build any freighters because we haven't researched them. So let's go six turns from now, five turns from now, four turns from now, three. Now, see that 20%? That means there's 20% chance that we will actually get this tech right now. And no, we didn't. Now we got a 50-50 chance of getting it right now. Yeah, and Randy didn't like that. So now we have an 80% chance. Come on. Come on. You're, you're kidding me. Fine. You're not going to do that for us. Is there anything we can build up production in? No. Oh, yeah, we'll put it into spine. What, what, what does that mean? It'll still be two turns. It's actually still there, so fine. Well, we had no one in research. It still came through. Uh, okay, now the only reason we got three technologies there under this was because there, we haven't got the basic techs. For example, if we research this power one, we'll get colony ship, outports, and transport ship, all because they're basic, basic techs, and you need them to actually do anything. But once we get to this advanced section... Uh, we'll have to pick one of them and we'll only be able to research one of those techs. That's why we're just getting three at the moment. I know it's a bit odd, but it is the way it is. Right now, we're going to switch into electronic computers and go straight up to research laboratories, which will increase our research speed because research is one of the things we're not that good at. And we're going to go back in here and we're going to produce ourselves a freighter fleet. The reason we want that freighter fleet, well, it'll transport food between our colonies. And right now, we're running a little bit shy. Uh, this guy's still at plus 92, but once we get him food, he'll be doing better. In fact, if we took him out of producing housing, He'd actually go to minus 8k. <laughs> Even though they're starving, the fact that they're producing housing is counteracting the starvation, which is kind of hilarious. All right, we've built our first freighter fleet. Now, he's still starving. Reason being, uh, we're, uh, we're at minus one food. So all we'll do is we'll stick this guy over here. That gives us a bunch more food. And now this guy is up to plus 142k a turn. That's awesome. That means we're going to have more people very shortly. And then we'll just turn all those guys over to research. We need to crank out a bunch of this stuff. But we're going to keep an eye on this plus four and this plus two here. Namely because once that goes to plus three, or uh, that goes to plus three freighters, that means, yep, there's been a majestic birth. We now have a million population, which we're immediately going to transfer back to the home planet. We're using this to make people, which we then bump back in our home planet, and it quickly pays for itself. All right, let's go. Tech, 32% chance, 68% chance, 100%... Hmm. You know what, just give me some more freighter fleet. I'm going to need it at some point anyway. Uh, we have 68% chance of that tech completing, and boom, electronic computer's done. Uh, go straight into the research laboratory, thank you. Ooh. Commander Gizmo offers to join you for 50 BC now and 1 PC a turn. Do you accept? He also has plus 5 research. He basically just generates plus 5 research for nothing. Uh, his engineering ability is... Increases the restoration rate of sh shield ships by 2%. In addition, the engineer appears are damage after battle. That means... He's not great, he's not bad, uh, but the researcher, I will definitely hire him for that. Now, you get these chance to hire leaders and commanders. Uh, the thing is, we get terrible ones. Because we're a repulsive race, leaders, the leaders that go around don't want to come to us. There's some really great ones out there, but we'll never see them. Like, not until very late in the game when we start wiping people out. Because, well, we're so ugly, no one wants to deal with us. Anyway, move everyone back into research, uh, go straight towards research labs, keep an eye on our freighters to see when one of them drops a level. Uh, we got minus one in food. What's going on? Ah, you... Yeah, you can go over there. Actually, that's still going to leave us shy of food, so you can go back to there. Keep going. And done. We've got ourselves a research laboratory. All right, uh, before we go into production, there is one thing I want to crank out. We want to get ourselves extended fuel tanks, nuclear missiles, standard fuel cells. This is just the basic stuff to allow you to build a ship. We're going to grab that right now. 
Uh, while that's going on, though, we're going to move everyone in back to this and we're going to put ourselves down to research lab. Gives plus one research to all of our scientists, so everyone generates next research, and we get a basic five research for doing nothing. This is all really good. So we'll just uh, crank those out. Research lab is complete. Then it goes straight on to spy. We'll move all of them back over. In fact, we'll put that up to nine population over there, and we're going to get them to produce a research lab as well. It gives plus five research just from sitting there. So why not? We'll have a research lab in two turns. We could also buy it with the money. See, we've got money coming in up here. Uh, we haven't actually set a tax rate, but you make money from uh, having population. They each generate a little bit of money themselves. So you can check up here and you can see six taxes collected because we have one, two, three, four, five, six people on the planet. You can increase that with certain buildings and things like that. But we'll get that done. This is down to one turn and then what I like to do is buy it. It's usually so cheap at that point, it's just better to take these people out and put them back into something productive, namely research. And now we've got extended fuel tanks, nuclear missiles, standard fuel cells, titanium armor, all good stuff. And then we're going to go into this section. We're going to grab, ooh, anti-missile bays, anti-missile rockets, reinforced hull, or fighter bays. Reinforced hull is usually better. Now that this research lab is finished here, this place is now producing plus five research for no, co well, it costs a little bit of money to maintain it, but it's definitely worth it, especially at this early stages of the game. And if we come in here, because we've got those basic stuff, we can now start producing ships. They won't be very good ships, but we can get ourselves out some scouts. Uh, first thing you want to do is go in here and get rid of the electronic computer. It actually just costs money. So actually, if we add this back in again, it costs 34 to build a ship. By removing that, we drop the cost to 31, making removing three of it. Uh, we're going to get these nuclear bombs. We're going to select them, and we're going to get rid of them as well. We've dropped our cost to 25. We're going to leave the extended fuel tanks. Reason being is that extends the range of the ship, and this is a scout, so we want it to have it. And then we're going to change the name to Scout 1. The reason we want to do this is every time you get new upgrades and access to new uh, tech, what happens is it refreshes the builds of all these ships, unless you've named them. If you've named them, it won't change any of the build outs. And these scouts are just ex perfect the way they are. They're cheap, cost efficient, and I don't want to mess with them until later. So, scout, we want to build one of you. In fact, we're going to build two scouts. And actually, the first one's going to be produced for free. Well, we have built reserved production. When you try and build something, and occasionally we were trying to build that spy, the production gets saved. And even if you swap out and switch from a spy to a ship, all of that production that was going into the spy is immediately just swapped over. There's no loss of production. It means you could spend, say, 10 turns building a battleship, then at the very end, stop and just build yourself a frigate, and it'd have all that built-up production, and you just, you'd start churning out a bunch of frigates until you, you break through the backlog of supply. It is very useful, and there's tricks around that. We don't need them. Uh, Chris and the new scout, ship scout one. What's our range? Oh, yeah, I kind of figured we were in a bad spot. That means we can only scout one planet. Oh, let's hope it's not a stinker. Uh, what do we got? Reinforced hull. Excellent. Uh, give me automated factories. Now once we've got automated factories to... Ooh, what do we got? Ultra rich heavy G. That's rich heavy G. Abundant. Oh, the problem with heavy G planets is you'd get a 50% worker penalty, meaning that 9 production is actually 4.5. So this guy over here with Abundant is actually giving us 4 production with no negatives. So oh, it might actually still be better to go with the Ultra Rich. And um, what You can get gravity generators later on to get rid of that penalty, which will make these planets really productive. Where's gravity generators? So planetary gravity generators are under physics. So it's 50 for those. It'll be... 150 research points for that. Battle scanners are 250. Neutron blasters are 900. And planetary gravity generators are 1,150 research points. Long way away. Long way away. Well, here's the thing. So we don't have any choices right now. Um, that's literally the only planets in range. So our only other option, if we wanted to look for alternative planets, would be to immediately research deuterium fuel cells for 250. That would extend our fuel range so we could maybe check other planets. I think, though, we'll just take it. This planet is not actually terrible. This one here, it pop abundant. That's actually quite a good planet. And those other two planets would be really good for population explosion. So I'm thinking, yeah, let's uh, let's turn ourselves out a, scout, uh, a colony ship in a moment. Uh, we should have the research. We, once we get automated factories, we'll go straight into producing colony ships. Oh, we went to minus one food. That can only mean, yep, that guy's kicked in, but we don't have enough food for him. And uh, uh, fine, fine, go there. Uh, soon we'll have automated factory out. Oh. Done. Automated factory. Finished. All right. Now that we've got that done, now I normally like to grab biospheres if memory serves, though it has been several years since I've played this, so I'm probably not going to get this perfect. 
if you're really perfect at this, you can get to, oh, what is it? I would say 100 population by turn 100. That's like the the gold standard. I used to be able to do that, or I did it once or twice. I wasn't consistent at it, but it was possible. Uh, you can go and make that automated factory, and then you can make housing. Right. Uh, that automated factory will be done in one turn. Uh, finished. Ooh, farming leader, plus 20. Plus 20% all farming. I'm going to hire you. We're, you're going to be very important later. In fact, we can immediately apply you. If we check under this colony here, we are currently producing 18 food. By getting this leader and applying them to our home system, we are now getting 20 food. So that's two food for the cost of one gold. Pretty worth it. Or one money. I'm not even sure what the money is called in this. All right. Uh, this guy has finished his production. We are going to change this over to here. Six, seven, eight. Oh, before I do this, this guy is currently producing 142 K population a turn. Now we're going to put automated factory in there and we're going to build out the automated factory real quick. And then when we move people out, this production should go a bit nasty. Uh, we're only going to put nine people in here. Reason being is if another person spawns right now, I want to make sure they've got space to spawn in. Otherwise, if we've maxed out the planet, they might not. Uh, you guys can all go back into research because next thing we're trying to research actually is colony ships. Sorry, colony ships, then biosphere. I'm an idiot. Uh, automated factory. Next in queue is housing. Done. Now we take these guys out, put them back into research, and we're now producing... 260k a turn, meaning every four turns, this planet will produce one population that we can move over to this planet. It's, um, that's pretty mental, to be honest. Hey, let's go. Uh, give me colony ships. Yep, colony ships, outpost, transport, done. Then we'll queue up Biosphere over here. Yeah, 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 we christened a new scout ship, which is of no use to us, but that is fine. But now that that's done, we can go back in here and we're going to queue up about three colony ships. We're going to be doing a lot of colonizing. And it's going to take seven turns to build that colony ship. Oof. Eh, that won't last forever, though. Reason being is we're going to have more people from the housing pouring in shortly. Oh, speaking of that, another person from housing just poured in. So, next. And I think that's another person. Oh, my God. All right, we're up to 18 of 20. Uh, I might have to stop and knock out that biosphere just so we can squeeze in another couple of people. Uh, Chris, the new ship, the colony ship, next in queue is colony ship. Oh, yeah, you. Hmm. We'll leave the scout behind. You're going to go to there. Actually, it might be a better idea to bring the scout with us now that I think about it. Once we get there, we should be able to scout some of the surrounding planets, but not that one. I was thinking maybe to go to that one, but for that, we're going to need fuel. And the fuel is going to be a while away. And you, oh, you're almost full. But, yeah, no, we're at 31% chance of getting uh, that breakthrough, so we're actually going to produce biosphere. Done. Perfection. All right, next up, now this is where it gets tricky. You see, we could go straight for planetary supercomputers, and then that's going to give us a massive boost to our research. However, we could also go for deuterium fuel cells, which increases our range so we can go further and find better planets. And then finally, there is Robo Miners, which increases our production by plus two. It's twice as good as the automated factories. However, I think, I think the best thing to do is go for research usually. Neural scanner here of these three, Scout Lab means you can put a... A lab on your ships, that's kind of pointless. Uh, honestly, you're better off just putting guns and stuff. You can do your research somewhere else. Also, there's a limit to how many ships you can build. Security Station gives you uh, better combat ro ro roles when defending against invasions on your ships. If people board your ships, they're shipboarding in this and ship-to-ship, -ship, uh, you know, infantry combat. But that's pretty rare. Normally, you blast them to pieces or you run away. Uh, neural Scanner is what I really want because that one improves spying. And we're going to be doing a lot of that later. We're not going to be good at the spying, but if you mass-produce enough spies... You can do some fun stuff with that. Some very fun stuff. All right, colony ship in four turns. Let me to colonize somewhere else. So let's, uh, oh, almost forgot. Biosphere. And we'll just chuck that up to the front of the queue and get moving. Yeah, time to colonize. Now, ooh, thing is, if we colonize that one, I think we get 4.5, but I'm not sure how the multipliers work out. So I think I'm just going to go with the abundant one as our starter. This might be the wrong move, but honestly, it's been a while since I played. I can't be expected to remember all the good stuff. Now, you. Automated factory, research lab, housing. Done. Then, once that's finished, we're going to check out these guys. Because we've got a colony here, that increases our range, as in that's a refueling station for us. So we can now check out these next three planets. And we'll go to one to the red, one to the red, and we'll get to the white one in a second. Oh, food's at minus one. That means we need to move someone. Yeah, you need to go over there. 
uh, once this guy's finished with his housing of this planet, we'll start moving them over to we or the new place we've acquired. In fact, it might be an idea to buy this production. This would cost 240 which I think is a bit expensive, so we're not going to do that just yet. If we give it a turn or two and knock some production off it... Oh, starvation short of one food. My bad. Should have put someone in there. Apologies. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. All right, space debris. Valuable remnants of shipwreckage wreckage are found, and we convert it to 50 BC. Uh, basically, coins. What do we got? Eight max pop poor. Ugh, ultra poor low G. Poor just means it's going to give us less production than normal, so just both these planets are, are pretty terrible. We would prefer to avoid colonizing them anytime soon. We'd prefer abundant or better. Uh, unless they've got, you know, organics on it, like they're good for farming. Uh, space debris. What do we got? 10 max pop ultra poor. Oh, 13 max pop poor. These planets are all weak sauce. Just horrendous weak sauce. Uh, which is the least bad. You know what? We'll find out once we hit that white planet. And this automated factory over here, it's down to 7. So instead of taking us to 240, since we left it go a few days, it costs 120. The less production there is to go, the cheaper it is when you throw money at it. So it's better off usually waiting a few days. We should probably be spending all this money like mad if we wanted to be absolutely crazy about things. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of lazy. The real danger for us here is that I won't switch back into tech and start building military in time, because I usually get caught up in expanding so much, I forget to do it. A space hydra attacks the blue bunnies at the Zib system. Well, that's not good. Ow. Okay, so scouts arrive at the Zib system. There is a huge Terran planet, 25 max pop, rich, low G. Low G gets us minus 25%, but I think we can work with that. That would be a very nice planet. It's got some natives on it to give us food. I would like that. Unfortunately, we've got to kill a space hydra. That might take some time. That might take some time indeed. When it comes to choosing a planet, we've got the, the Bulba system, which is 8 max pop poor and 5 max pop ultra poor low G. Or the slightly better 13 max pop poor with 10 max pop ultra poor. I'm thinking this one. Yeah, 13 max pop poor is our best choice. Now, what we could do also is we could just send another ship to here and colonize one of these planets. I kind of want to hold off on that because we can use this planet here to build colonies on them, though we might not. Depending on how things go, we might just be too poor to do that. And you can put that person over there. We're almost full on this planet. It's up to 21 of 22. One more person in there, and that planet is full to the brim. But hey, it's churning out those colony ships for us at a good clip. So, next up. And, yeah, checking everything. Everything's good. That research lab is close to completion, so we'll just buy it out. And then they can switch over to housing. And uh, they're currently at one of eight. Oof, it's going to take a minute. Construction of research lab. Next in queue is housing. Colony ship should be arriving. Yeah, 13 max pop poor. Yeah, we'll take it. Okay, you. Automated factory. Research lab. Housing. Okay. Christened a new ship. Colony ship. Yay! In that case, you can just go over to Bulbus. Uh, you. Scout ship, go there. We're going to want another scout ship, if you wouldn't mind. In fact, yeah, give me a scout ship. Then another couple of colony ships. Then I think that might be it. We might have to stop for a bit. Oh, housing is done on Draconis 2. So, yep, straight over here again. Food-wise, we're still one short. Now, this is what's going to happen. We're going to keep adding population to this place, but this is the only planet we've got that can make food. Finding turn planets is pretty hard. And terraforming comes much later. So getting food is usually all goes into your home planet, which means this we need to find a replacement production planet as soon as possible. Otherwise, you're going to end up stifling on production. One thing I also have to point out here is this plus four. This is ships. It's the amount of command points you start and the amount of ships you can support. Every ship you has costs one point depending on size. So a scout ship costs one point. A, I want to say... Destroyer costs two, cruiser is three, battleship is four, Titan is five, Doomstar is six. Yes, this goes all the way up to Doomstars. Uh, so, what we want to do is make sure we have enough points, because if you start having a fleet above the size you're allowed by the amount of star bases you own, you have problems. So to increase the amount of fleet points you get, you build star bases at places, and you can upgrade those star bases and get technologies that make them more effective at it. So your fleet has to remain relatively small to start. You can't just spam a bunch of small ships and kill people. You have to be a little bit strategic about what you build and why. Anyway, we built a scout ship. Next in queue is colony ship. Uh, we're going to take that scout ship and start exploring some more. Actually, we'll send it over to Bulbas. We can explore this one colony down here. Let's hope that there's a good planet there. That would be very nice. And we can skip forward to turn or two. Scouts arrive at um, um, Azimo. Yeah, there's nothing. There's a gas giant. Can't settle gas giants. So this is useless. However, there is a wormhole. Wormholes allow you to travel from one system to another. 
Actually, let me show you there. It's like a little thin line there. That means that you can travel from there to there instantaneously, regardless of what your fuel range is or anything like that. Usually not that useful. In fact, usually it's more of a hindrance than a help, because for you, you have a hard time defending fireware places. For the AI, they just love invading your stuff. Yeah, you. Uh, that's good. See this, this? These colonists will be unavailable for three turns while in transit. Are you sure? We'll just hit no for now. Reason being is we're actually transporting people from Wei to Kreshu, from one system to another. So far, we've just been transporting colonists from Draconis 1 to Draconis 2, or vice versa. Transferring people in system instantaneous. From one system to another, it's actually based on your drive speed. So in the map down there at the bottom, you'll see there's a little green arrow that's showing, or green line that's showing where we're trending them from to. And yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but that's why it's going to take, well, three turns for them to get there. And if you check our freighters over here, we have currently have six freighters. And when we send this person, it drops down to two. Reason being, it takes five freighters to move them. So the reason it dropped by four is, well, we're no longer feeding them. <laughs> well, they don't get fed while they're in transit, it seems. They're in stasis, I want to say. Yeah, we'll say they're in stasis. Why not? And we'll buy that automatic factory there, but uh, yeah, these guys are producing 254, this guy's producing 260, so we're getting a new person every two turns. Nice. Let's keep expanding. Scouts arrive at the Yacob system. We have eight max pop poor, ugh, and three max pop abundant low G. Remember, this is an ocean planet, which means it can produce food, two food per farmer. However, say a Terran planet, that can produce two food per farmer. So, is that worth settling then? That might actually be a... Oh, it's a little bit far for us to go. And we'll have to worry about running into the air out there, but... That might actually be useful, depending on what we find. Uh, and that assuming we can't get our hands on Zib, though we should be able to take Zib. Yeah, we're pretty good. We'll get Zib, probably. Zib is the place with that big st thing outside it. Anyway, sick planet for colony ship in Bulbas. Yeah, this is the secondary system that we really were not fond of, but hey. We will take it. Automated factory, research lab, housing. Done. We're not building star bases on any of these. We have no defenses. But we're all about that production. Housing is complete on uh, Dracona, so where are we going to send this person? I feel like... You know what? I need to build up way. I need to start sending people to way. So... I shouldn't have sent people away from there, should I? Yeah, I think all of our future people are going to go to way. On the grounds that way is a good place to send them because there's lots of uh, productive capacity there. So we're going to need a bunch more freighter fleet. We're going to be transporting people and we're going to have to start feeding a lot of people there. So we're going to start building up the way system and use that to colonize all the surrounding places to get even more housing and then way will be converted over to production. So let's go. New uh, freighter fleet, one settler arrived. Uh, since one settler has arrived, that's freed up some freighters. Also, we're going to need more food. Yeah, it's going to eat into that. So... Draconis, you're going to send someone over to Way there. Yeah, two cut turns, they'll be unavailable. That is fine. Freighter Fleet, next in queue is Freighter Fleet. Way has built one person. Actually, we'll leave them where they are for now, but we're definitely going to be topping them up. And then we're going to be putting in a biosphere. We're going to be making sure they are maxed. Oh, next, finished research lab. Next in crew, true. Ah, next in was automated factory. That takes 135. You know what? Uh, automated factory, you are going to... We're going to buy you out. This place is also just another person. We're going to send them straight over to Way 3. Done. We've got more freighter fleet. Next in queue is colony ship. Automated factory is complete. Next in queue is research lab. Oh, I haven't been, re I haven't been exploring, have I? One more planet we can explore. And then I think that will be it. That will be our first wave of colonization. We'll get one more colony ship out, and then the rest of it's all just going to be housing all the way down. Uh, two turns for them to get there. Yeah, that is fine. Done. Chris, the new ship, colony ship. Next in queue is colony ship. Oh, do we need this next colony ship? Colony ship takes three turns. Scouting this new system takes two. So, we'll scout the new system. If it's worth doing that system, we'll... Take the new, we'll take the new, oh, actually, we already have a colony ship. Ha. Huh. No, we'll leave it as it is. If a new salt colony ship comes up, great. Uh, two settlers arrive at wait. Perfect. I think you need to switch over to Biosphere, buddy. Uh, then we'll get you a star base. And then we're going to get you some colony bases. 
We want to make sure it's protected. Once we have this many people on it, it's kind of a good investment to protect it. Right now, any of these places get destroyed, it would be very painful, but we could live with it. Having this place be destroyed loses a lot of population. We've just invested a lot of time and money into this, so no. Uh, you need to go there. And we're going to have to start putting more people into food again soon. How are you looking? 75C? Yeah, we can spend that. So that's a research lab done. Skates arrive at the Shat system. Ultra-rich Heavy G. No, that's not a terrible place. And unstable wormhole, which I would... Or stable wormhole. Uh, finished construction of biosphere. Next to Cuba's starbase. Finished construction of research lab. Next to Cuba's housing. You know what? Let's check over here. But I'm actually kind of liking the look of that one. You start heading over there. That leaves us with one more that's about to be produced. So I'm thinking... Actually, Kyusho. It's ultra poor, which means our people are only getting two industry per worker. But... Yeah, we should be able to build that up pretty quickly. It'll cost us a colony ship, but I'm willing to waste another colony ship just to get even more production of people underway. Why not? We're all about producing them people. Uh, wait. Have another have another person. There you go. You're almost full to the grim. So far, I think I think we're doing okay. I'm not going to change the course just yet. I'm going to let that colony ship finish. We'll find a use for it. Uh, scouts arrive at the Western system. That is terrible. Uh, we christened a new colony ship. So there is nothing there. That's actually good. It means no one's going to use it as a jumping off point. As in, the AI is not going to settle there and cause us problems. It's actually kind of nice for us. All right, in that case, uh, we've got one more colony ship, and I'm trying to think of where to put it. Now, we could put it in one of these places that's not going to get colonized for a while, but I think what we're going to do is put it in We I would prefer to get this place up and running as quickly as possible, and that ultra-rich heavy-G planet is just begging out to get colonized. So, uh, actually, how far can we travel? There is no planets in range that we haven't explored. There will be more stuff later, but for now, we're going to get that colony ship there. It is time for us to start cranking into the research. We need to finish that neural scanner and get ourselves those uh, new planetary supercomputers. For that reason, you guys all go into research. Uh, this guy is going to become our production base. They can hold up to 10 people. We might end up moving it to another planet later, but for now, let's continue. You two settlers arrive at way, which means our food uh, is going to require us to put more people into food. This just keeps getting worse and worse. No way to avoid it. And then, next turn. Galactic news. Scientists in the Chakra Emperor were shocked to discover a virus in the advanced chemistry research computers. All systems were infected, totaling a loss of 58 research points. This is the news guy. He comes up every so often and tells you stuff. Well, the news droid. Uh, the ANN? Galact no, GNN. Galactic News Network. Yeah, that doesn't affect us. It means someone lost some research points. There's random events in this that can negatively affect you or the AIs, or positive ones as well. Ultra Rich Heavy G, we will take it. Uh, yeah, I want to see how good this is for production. You, if we switch you over to just doing housing, 188k, that's not bad. Uh, anyway, Automated Factory Research Lab. Yeah, you can do those two first. And actually, we could speed those along a bit by sending some people over. It's just getting knocking out those early ones is pretty handy. Uh, automated factory will be done in one turn. One. Neural scanner complete. Uh, planetary supercomputer. The reason we want this, plus two to all the research generated. The other option is a positronic supercomputer, which adds plus 75% chance to hit to all your uh, beam weapons. That's actually really, really good. However, there's a thing, let's say you go further down, you find a Cybertronic computer that gives plus 100% chance to hit, and they don't stack. You can only use one or the other. So right now we're using Electronics one, which only gives us plus 25% chance, which is terrible. So at some point you have to stop getting the bonuses to your production things and focus on getting the stuff that improves your ships. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that in a bit, probably. Maybe. Then what we're going to do is we have three planets that have extra people coming in. So... Three people, yeah, two turns, two tur three turns, and you for two turns. Actually, yeah, we still have the free freighters. Now, I have to remember there's three people going there, so that's already six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which means we can only bring four people back, otherwise that place will overload. Gotta remember that. Yeah. Can happen that you put too many people back there, and then the colonists arrive, there's nowhere to house them, and they just simply die. Awkward, just very awkward. Finish construction of research lab. Yep, uh, this place here is done the research lab, then I suppose uh, Biosphere Starbase. You're going to become a production hub. What are you up to? 65 industry produced. You're actually pretty monstrous. You might end up becoming another one of our production colonies. Uh, put four of you back here. Actually, we don't care about the Biosphere. 
Uh, I'll get done at some point. You're up to seven. Four turns on that star base. Let's go. Two set arrives at way two. Yep, there's another one inbound. Uh, so you know what? I'll move them off just to make sure we don't overload that place. Hire the environmentalist. Yep, environmentalist reduce your pollution by 30% on the planet. Yeah, we don't want those. It's like planet for colony in the chat system. I've never actually seen that name before in this game, but hey. Hey, chat. Uh, the state of the colony, like this is a crystal co thing. It's like a, a weird, heavy thing. It doesn't seem to really bother your colonists, even though it's a toxic planet of sort. It increases your maintenance costs, but that's about it. It doesn't seem to affect them living there. Automated factory, research lab. And then we'll put on housing, probably. But this place is probably going to become a production colony as well. Too many of those. And I have not enough people in food. Again, as you can see, we're running out of research people over here. Yeah, that star base will be produced in one turn. Then you're going to start producing... Actually, you only need one colony base. There's only one place left to colonize in that system. So, long-term plan here. Well, medium-term plan. We want to kill that Hydra. To kill that Hydra, we need to get ourselves some um, nukes. We have nukes, we just need to miniaturize them, so we need to get as far as Mercury-like missiles to get the MERV miniaturization. I'll show you that in a bit. So first you want to get the planetary supercomputer. Uh, that will allow us to research stuff faster, and it just gives us... Ooh, Gizmo gains level. We'll get now an extra plus 10 research from him, or plus 5. Starbase, next in queue is colony base, right? So this place is finished. That, in fact... Yeah, put that over there. That guy can hold on. We're going to start moving everyone to way 2. Yeah, three turns... Three turns, and give me a freighter fleet. We're actually running a little bit low on those. We can't move that guy over, because if we do, people will start starving. There won't be enough cut freighters left. We need uh, at least four freighters free, or he can't move. Well, it's technically five, but minus one, because he won't need food in transit. Uh, next to Q is freighter fleet. Cool, we should be able to move him now. Done. Also, if you're going to put more colonists on a planet, then we will kill them. It'll usually warn you. It's only if... You move people in system, it doesn't warn you. If you move people in system while you have people on the way, it won't give you any warning. Uh, automated factory, 120. Uh, no, we've only got 190. I'd like to keep that in reserve just in case we run into any emergencies like a uh, fleet showing up or something like that. Uh, freighter fleet, next to queue is colony base. Yeah, two settlers arrive. Make sure food's good. Yeah. These places are getting stacked. You can get finished. Next to queue is research lab. Next to queue after that is housing. It's like, eh, and now we have a third colony base. And this is it. We're basically just plowing through all of this, making ourselves more and more people all the time and putting down research labs everywhere. We're getting plus five for all of these research labs that just sit there. And we can afford to do this because well, we just have so many people. Our plan is to beat people, not with tech. Well, okay, we'll use some of that. But we throw literally people at every single problem. And every single problem you encounter, you'll see how we utilize it. All right, you. Uh, you finished that. You're the one to make the colony base, right? To remember, yes, you did make the colony base. So we were going to turn you over to production. So tell you what, uh, we're going to get you to repeat build freighter fleet. But then we're going to get you to move everyone out of it. We'll leave one person in there to build the freighters. And that way, whenever they need anything, we can put it in front of the freighter fleet and then pop it back out. We're always going to need more freighters. You always do. So we'll probably change it over to spies at some point once we start running into people but you're always going to have some you're always going to have a few planets repeat building either freighter fleet or spies up to a certain point all right now what we could do is we could start moving a few of these over to we two to start stockpiling that place but i don't think that's worth it at the moment in fact this we one we're probably just going to build that place up and turn that into pure housing only it's a nice planet but it's not as good as the other two so we want to use the housing from that to probably stockpiling another place and we want to do the the same thing we've done in here We've turned these three planets, we've maxed out two of them, so we've built up uh, actual infrastructure on them, so they're good productive planets. The last one is left is just pure housing. And we're probably going to do the same to this place. There's two planets here, so the 13 pop one will become a productive planet, usually doing research or something like that. And the second one will just be left as pure housing. And then we just keep expanding using the non-productive planets as housing producers. And, ooh, can we explore it? Yes, we can. I forgot to be explore that planet. Ooh, we can also go over there. Think it might be faster to just take the wormhole first. And you can now go down there. And food's gone to negative one again. But that's okay. That's okay. We've got a bunch of people are going to be moving around. You guys. Yeah, two cut turns. Yep. A lot of micromanagement with this build design. But uh, you'll see how powerful it is once we run in and we can look at opposing uh, factions once they come along. That will be a while, though. 
GNN, there are hundreds of new citizens in the Golden Empire as the sudden population boom has doubled the population growth rate of uh, one of the colony planets. That's great. And elsewhere in the galaxy, the census ranks rankings of empire populations. The Chakra are in the lead. Ooh, the Blue Bunnies are only second? We're only second? That is unacceptable. Oh, that is... Mm. Well, the Chakra are a bunch of rabbits. They, they literally have a massive population bonus for the race, and they're subterranean, and they have a bunch of stuff going for them. Uh, all right. We're still researching, still going. Scouts arrive at Karina. There's nothing there. Two settlers arrive at Wee, which means it's probably messed up our food or something. Actually, no. Our food's still stable. That's making me suspicious. We haven't had to put anyone into food for a while. Uh, continue one more turn. Planetary supercomputers. Excellent. Now, we're going to need battle pods. Battle pods increase the, uh, the amount of space. You can, stuff you can put on a ship by about 50%, which is crazy good. Eight max pop rich planet. Yes. We're sending, a scout, we're, we're sending a colony ship there ASAP. Um, yeah, that's got to be done. That means you can put 10 people on there with the biosphere, six plus, you know, six industry per worker. Yeah, that place will be absolutely perfect. So some place is going to start producing one right now. Uh, and you have just finished a starbase. Ooh, actually, supercomputers all around. Yes, this is... This gets weird later on, but what we have to do now is produce supercomputers on all the planets, which means you've got to go there. Like, uh, give me a minute to arrange this. So, supercomputer, supercomputer, and supercomputer. Now, when is that still? Our research is currently at 45, even though we have no one researching. Uh, actually, one second. You need to go over there. Uh, and you need to be sent to, was it We 2 Yeah, We 2 is a current one. Yeah, two turns. Yeah, fine, Grant. Uh, so, we're at 45 research, and then once we hit the turn button, we're now up to 55 research, and that's only with one place having finished it. Now, what we want to do is find Draconis 2 over here, which has currently not enough people on it. Uh, we're going to put on six, actually, we're going to put on eight people. Make that nine people. Yep. And we're going to get it to produce a supercomputer as well. Even though there's nothing else on this planet, we're going to throw on a supercomputer because it gives us an extra 10 research, I believe. Yeah, generates 10 research points and increases the research per scientist by two. Why not? It does cost uh, maintenance, though. So it's got a maintenance cost of two, so we have to pay two money to keep it going. Uh, which is expensive, but we'll just make more people. More people, more money. Oh, this place over here, it's got actually two housing, so how long will I take it to produce a supercomputer? Nine turns? You know what? Fine. We'll get it have its two population, and you over here, supercomputer, housing, how long will that take you? Nine turns. That is golden. It'll take a little bit of time and slow us down, but I'm okay with that. Currently at 55 research. Now we're at 75. Yeah, this is the power of this. Right, you have finished producing the supercomputer. You've also finished producing the trade goods thing. So we're going to get you to repeat build spies. Um, or actually, which one of you gives us more production? I'm pretty sure we too. The one with the high gravity, despite it, is still giving us 95 industry produced. And we're one short of people on that planet. Whereas this place is only giving us 80 production, and it has an extra person on it. Yeah, I think this is about to become our production center. So you, I want you to give us a colony ship. You can produce one in six turns. Uh, not great, not terrible. If we get another person over there, we'll get it down to five. But I think we already have someone inbound. Actually, no. We'll cancel that. In that case, we will move that person over. I thought we had someone inbound, but it would have warned me when I tried to move that person out. All right, so you'll have that uh, colony ship done in five turns. This guy can go back to doing research. It's up to 123 because each girl is getting an extra plus three research. One for the research lab, plus two for the supercomputers. They're doing pretty good. Okay, another supercomputer finished. So you guys can all go back in there. And we're going to need more food. And we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places left here. It's getting pretty tight on that front. But hey, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, chat over here. How long will it take you to boost the supercomputer? Seven turns? Actually, you know what? I'm going to cancel that supercomputer. I don't think it's worth it on some of these places just yet. It's just places that are off on the edge, they don't really have much of a chance at doing it. Like this place over here is fine because we can put a supercomputer in here. And dump a bunch of people to help do the production. Like, so, like that place will be done in no time. But these other places, uh, it takes too long. I think I'm just going to leave it for now. We're going to have plenty of extra research coming in anyway. We're going to knock out battle pods in like two turns tops. Yep, automated factory, next to Q's research lab. 
In fact, I think I'll wait till they all have three people in them, then get them to produce the research labs. Just makes things a little bit faster. And yeah, what do we got? Battle pods. Done. Uh, next up, Armory Barracks, Fighter Garrison, Spaceport. Well, I kind of wanted to get Robo Miners, but that's 650 research. It is a bit far away. I think we can afford it. All right, we'll grab a Spaceport, which increases our money generation. Then, though, once we get that, we got to go straight into chemistry. We need some weapons. We're a little bit light on that, and I'm always a little bit nervous because I never, ever remember to get enough of them. All right, next turn, what do you got for us? Uh, GNN. The population boom has ended. Yeah, big through burst control blamed. Uh, construction research lab. Next in queue, supercomputer. Right, chat one. You've got your housing up to three. It will take you five turns, is it, to build a supercomputer? Build time five? Perfect. Uh, we'll let the housing on that one go to three as well before we do it. Yeah, seems reasonable. And everyone else is doing their thing, and that colony ship is almost built. Nice. In fact... Cue me up a second colony ship. I think I'd like one. Just just to have a spare line about the place, you know? Uh, freighter fleet, next to queue is freighter fleet, christened colony ship. So, you go all the way over to Lar. That place looks perfect. Rich. Mm. Hell yeah. Uh, that means we can do more scouting up that and actually... No, oh, not really. Uh, spaceport done. And now we get Robo Miners. This is plus two production. It will drastically increase how much stuff you can do. The other option is Battle Stations. We would really like those as well. Gives you a heavily armed starbase with plus four parsec spec adding range and 10% of the defense. It, but it's not as good as Robo Miners. That allows us to produce more ships. More ships means we're less likely to end up dead and having to rely on starbases to defend ourselves. All right, housing there is up to three. Give me a... a oh, actually, you're done with everything. Why have I not been spending you? You must be finished the supercomputer. Never mind. In that case, uh, the next planet up to be improved, I believe, is Shat. The one that's ultra-rich. Heavy gravity, ultra-rich, but... Seven colonists in transit. Go for it. Or seven turns, whatever. We've got 16 freighters left over. Yeah, that supercomputer is about to get done as well. We've got 162 research points per turn. I love it. Finish supercomputer, next in queue is housing. Supercomputer, 182 research points. And our housing is back on track. You all need to get over to Shat. We're going to get that place online. Still got enough freighters. Colony, Another colony ship is being burned out. Supercomputers are being built on those two places. Bring it on. All right, next in queue is housing. Oh my god, so much stuff gets done. There's a lot of micromanagement. Yes, a lot with this. All right, Shat is done, so give me a spaceport and a starbase. In fact, actually, Biosphere, Spaceport and Starbase. I also need to do that over here, Spaceport. Spaceport increases money generation by 50%, and, well, our income has actually gone to minus 22 because of all the buildings we've been building. Those research labs are not cheap, you know. Uh, you, colony ship, no, no, give me a Spaceport before that colony ship. With that in place, that should hopefully help sort out the money a bit. Eh, spaceport over there in front of the freighter fleet, thank you very much. And you are going straight over to housing. You don't need anything else. Oh, actually... I build a starbase. Gives us a little bit more points to work with, as in we're up to eight fleet supply. We're going to need a bit of that because we need to build some ships in a bit to, well, defend ourselves. So since that place is already almost done, just, you know, let it finish up. Right now we're at minus 22 BC a turn. We could increase taxes, but if you increase taxes, it actually taxes your production, which means you're slowing down your production, so I usually prefer not to. Uh, we got a, one spaceport has brought us to minus 10. It's just free money, basically. And those guys can go back there. We'll have another spaceport in a minute. That should hopefully put us to almost in the green. Yeah, plus six. Colony ship in the Lair system. Uh, probably not going to help us. Eight max pop rich. Thank you. We shall take it. This planet is just going to be perfect for production. So automated factory, research lab, and then straight into Starbase. Actually, automated factory, biosphere research lab. It's a little bit far away from us. So I want to get this place defended quickly, if at all possible. Well, we've got our hands on another colony ship, which is great, but it's time to get back into research there. You have produced everything you need, so you can get back into uh, doing research as well. Oh, Lara is actually better than Shat and a little bit further out, so I kind of feel like I should dump everything onto Lara to get it up to speed as quickly as possible. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It's usually a bad idea to change midstream, but I just want to defend this place and keep this system safe. So getting all those guys there as quickly as possible is would be my preferred method and 
research wise, we should be hammering through the last of the tech right now. There we go. Robo miners. That's the last big production tech. And now we're going straight for weapon tech. Uh, weapon wise, deuterium fuel cells will increase the range of our ships. That's kind of essential for us right now. We could skip it and hold it until we get iridium fuel cells. Um, but that means the only thing we're gaining in it is titanium armor, which gives us a 50% bonus to our armor. It's not great. Usually you hold that until you get neutronium armor, and you get neutronium armor, and you uh, combine that with thorium fuel cells for infinite range plus uh, the armor bonus. You know what? We're going to go with the titanium armor. Never really do it that way, but we'll go with the titanium armor. We should be done with that in no time. Oh, we've met someone. We've encountered the humans. Oh, it's just the humans. Thank God. Uh, freighter fleet. Next in queue is freighter fleet. Spy. Next in queue is spy. Finished construction of spaceport. Next in queue was star base. Right. Since we've encountered humans, uh, where are they? Oh, they're actually pretty close to us. That is a not great thing. Oh, yeah, that's a not a great thing at all. They're probably in range of Lar. Uh, first thing you want to do with the info, find the history graph. Then you want to check out what's the population like. Yeah, that's our population up here. The blue bunnies. Uh, that's why they're called the blue bunnies. And the green down here is the humans. Buildings. We have way more than them. Technology. We're actually about the same because we're su we suck at it so far. And fleet-wise, they have way more than us. And that is the problem. If they have more fleet than you, they're going to come for you. So, uh... We need to start building a fleet, and we need to start building it fast. So you, get over here. Give me... We just need hulls. I'm going to go with destroyers. Uh, the, the general knowledge is to go with frigates, but uh, I like destroyers because they're a bit bigger, and you can do fun stuff with them. So you, um... I'll just put on nothing. In fact, give me no weapons. We literally just want to build these right now so that we have something in the sky just to convince the enemies not to attack us. So, uh, empty destroyer. There we go. How long will you take to build? Build time, one turn. That's what I want to hear. So that's two. That's four. And that's six points of them. What have we got over here? We do have a colony ship. And I'm trying to figure out where we want to send that. Oh, I forgot to hit... Ah. Say, I forgot to hit the record button. I missed a couple of turns. Uh, nothing really major happened. We produced uh, those two or three empty ships. Uh, so they're now flying across the place. We've gotten those three empty ships which have no weapons in them, no nothing, and we're sending them over to Lair, which is the closest one to the humans, just to defend it in case the humans get a little bit uppity. Uh, then once they're in position... Uh, actually, this place over here orbiting Karina, that fleet can go. If we go into fleets here, we can click on Karina, and we can scrap this ship. We won't get any money back, but yeah, I do want to scrap it. Reason being is it gets rid of that extra point we have, so we're not hemorrhaging quite as much money. And once that colony ship lands uh, at Lair, we're going to turn that colony... Look, we're going to colonize this planet, namely because the, if we colonize this planet, the humans won't show up to try and take that planet from us. Otherwise, they might show up and actually try and colonize it themselves, and then we're sharing a system, and it gets all sorts of awkward. You know, they ask if we've got a cup of sugar. We say no. They pull out a ray gun. We pull out a ray gun, and the next thing you know, you're all shooting each other. Uh, oh. And which colony we were going to improve? I believe it was Lair. Yeah, Lair needs a lot more love. Uh, also, uh, with those people on their way to Lair, something going to take six turns to get there. Oh my god. Uh, Starbase and Starbase. These two Starbases here, once they're done, they're going to give us extra points. Each one is worth a point of fleet control, which means we can start building more ships to add to our fleet. If you look under here under fleet, you can see that our fleet has gone up since we built those three empty destroyers. Even though there's no weapons in them, they still count as fleet power, and that's all the AI looks at. And uh, Hopefully our population is going to start dragging us out of the hole we're in. Uh, freighter fleet, finish training a new spy, next to queue is spy, construction of starbase, next to queue is housing. Oh, in here is where your spies go. There's a whole spy section. This is where the humans show up. All the rest of the contacts are the ones we haven't finished yet. We can put people on here to spy and hopefully get info or find technology out of them. Problem is, um, yeah, we suck at spying. Well, no, it's not that we suck. The AI cheats at this level, so one spy isn't going to cut it. We're going to have to be able to soak a lot of losses if you want to spy on people, so we're going to need to produce a lot of spies. And get a lot of tech and spies. It, it, it's going to be a whole deal. I am not going to buy this, namely because we're running out of money right now, and I don't want to start taxing things. You start taxing things, it eats into your production. Uh, we too. Oh, you've produced everything. Oh, you are... Ah, I'm an idiot. I forgot to build a bunch of stuff. Uh, Chateau, build me a robo-miner plant. Robo-miner plant is going to increase your production. Uh, we... You are actually just going to be housing production. So, just go back to housing. Uh, then a whole bunch of your people need to go back to this place. 
And since you're housing, that means we can start firing these people over to Lar 2. Lar 2 is going to be maxed out in no time, and Shat 1 is actually doing pretty good as well. Robo Miner Plant, uh, this freighter free place needs to get a Robo Miner Plant as well. Uh, in fact, we'll put everyone down there. Reason being is those Robo Miner Plants are just going to increase productivity by a huge margin. You go down there. It's unfortunately going to cost us a whole bunch of money, so we might have to set, dedicate an entire colony just to producing trade goods to drag us out of that hole. We also should produce them probably on the housing planets to increase our housing, but right now we can't afford it. Let's keep going. Uh, nothing crazy going on. Next up. Yep, select planet for colony ship and lair. Okay, second planet. We're going to colonize it. Done. You're going to be automated factory and starbase. Actually, robo miner plant and then starbase. We might throw in biosphere depending on how this goes. Robo miner plant next to Q's freighter fleet. Q's spy. Money is minus 17. That is an enormous amount of money. However, what we can do, uh, there's a trick you can do. What we can do is build a scout. Okay, design scout one. This is an empty scout. In fact, cancel that. We want to make a completely different one. This is empty scout. It has nothing in it. It's literally empty. Then what we're going to do is we're going to build it. Uh, there's a little trick we can do with that to generate money, but it's not free money, but it does. Uh, it's more efficient, let's just say. Uh, all you guys can go over there and we'll leave three people to build spies. We're going to need a lot of spies because we're going to start losing them as well. So... Having three people building spies consistently is just how I kind of get around it. Ooh, that planet's almost as limited. If it's, uh, if it's not a remedy, the setter will die upon arrival in eight turns. I'll say yes, namely because uh, the biosphere is about to complete in one turn, meaning we can send two people before that happens, so we can send one more next turn as well. Next, breakthrough. Merculite missiles. Yes. Finally. Okay, in fact, we might go up one more level in this. We're going to go with iridium fuel cells to increase the range of our ships. Now, let's go check some stuff out. Ooh, wow, a lot of stuff. We got a new scout, uh, training a new spy, next to you a spy, finished construction of Starbase, finished construction of Biosphere, and two settlers arrived at Lair. Uh, yeah, you finished construction of Starbase, and Shat Prime is now open for business. You can start producing stuff. So, remember that empty destroyer we made that had no weapons in it and was kind of useless? Well, here is the nuclear missiles. Actually, let's try Merculite. These are the Merculite missiles. These are the ones we just researched. And you will notice that in here, there is nothing. In the nuclear missiles, there is all of this stuff. That is because the Merculite missiles have just been researched and they are huge, take up a lot of space, and are pretty terrible. Whereas the nuke missiles have been miniaturized because we've researched two levels down chemistry, which is where all the missiles reside, meaning we now have access to Mirv's nukes, which basically quadruples the damage of them. Mirv's carry four separate warheads which separate from the missile just before impact, increases the size and cost of the Western system by 100%, doubles the size, and requires two levels of refinement to reuse. But... When you mirror your nukes, you, well, you're hitting them with four warheads when it hits. So it's not one warhead you're hitting them, you're quadrupling your damage. Then you can make them fast, ACCCM, and heavily armored if you want. So we'll accept that. Now, down here, there's how many shots it takes, they carry. And that improves the amount of space it takes up. Uh, space is down here, but let's improve upon that by putting in battle pods. Increases available space by 50%. That's pretty much mandatory. I don't think you can survive in this game without those. And... Let's give us one other nuke missiles here and do the same thing. I'd like to have them in two groups, just so that if you meet some small targets, you can separate out. Right. That gives us five nuke missiles. And we got titanium armor. Uh, we don't need the computer. Uh, our beam defense is plus 40. If we add in the computer, it's still plus 40. So like, we don't need this because we don't have any of those things. It doesn't change space. It just changes the cost of the ship slightly. So, Destroyer 1, first combat ship. And let's give it a new... Look. Done. Now, none of those ships are in orbit, unfortunately, so we'll start building a destroyer one here. It'll take two turns to build it. And this place finished building Scout 1. Perfect. We're going to hit the refit button. And we are going to refit this ship. Cost to build 23. We're going to refit it into Empty Scout. In, in other words, itself. It costs 5 to refit this ship. And all the excess production we put in, which is, well, 115 production, gets turned directly into money. So we should get an extra plus 115 and minus 20. Eh, whatever. We'll figure it out. It should work that way, though it has been a while since I've done this. Well, I'm going to hit the turn button here and see what happens to our money. 75 minus 23. Huh. 53 plus 37. Nope. Did not work. That extra production did not... Ah. Refitted shit to the scout. What did I do wrong? 
Wait a minute, I think I know what I did wrong. Uh, re repeat build, refit, then hit it. Does it? I think you have to put trade goods after it, maybe? I could be wrong. No, I'll give it one more attempt. Then I'll just go back to making money the old-fashioned way. Right, minus 26. What happens if we hit turn? Hey, plus 91, but we didn't make a whole bunch of money, so fine. Didn't work. Uh, rebuilding destroyer. Yep, refit. Building that extra destroyer has taken over us over cap. We now have three of them right there. And where's the other one? Oh, one of them's over at chat. Okay, fine. We'll just leave those where they are. That should hopefully discourage the humans. Our fleet is looking not quite as big as theirs, but pretty decent. And maybe we should start churning out a... Dist uh, well, one of the larger ships right now. Uh, bigger ships have a bigger impact. That sounds so stupid. Um, for example, if you build, say, a battleship... A battleship is worth far more than the points would suggest. This is worth two, this is worth four, but it'll show up like it's about six points worth of power because battleships have an awful lot more space. For example, this has 250 space base. Destroyer only has 60. Yeah, this thing's worth an awful lot more. So might be an idea to churn out a battleship or two, even if they're not great, just so that we have some uh, extra fleet power to discourage attacks. This is the battleship design I have come up with. It's not amazingly imaginative. It's a... Uh, Actually, very consistently on point. It's just a mass of nuclear missiles crammed inside a hull with battle pods for extra space and reinforced hull so the ship can take a pounding before it goes down. There's only uh, two racks of missiles in here, so this thing will fire, well, 18 nuclear MIRV missiles with uh, electronic counter countermeasures and fast movement speed, and they're armoured so they're harder to shoot down. And then once it's fired them, it'll get those two volleys off and then it's pretty much useless. Oh, and left the electronic computer in because, uh, at this point, it's going to cost a fortune to build this thing. But... Building it at our bestest, bestest place, we're getting it built in 10 turns, which is pretty decent. Uh, in fact, let's do this by industry. Industry is probably better. If we sort all the planets by industry, the ones that have the most industry float up to the top. I think, actually, let me check something here. Yeah, we too is our best industry planet. It seems ultra-rich with heavy gravity beats out rich with normal, or, you know, beats out abundant, or rich with normal gravity. I should probably know all this already, but, you know, it's been a while, okay? Uh, we've put a few people on trade goods so that we can get some of those out. And when we sort by industry, it puts all the housing at the bottom, which makes this easier. I think this is how I used to sort it back in the day. All right, you. We don't need as many trade goods as that. You can pop over there. That puts our income to plus zero. You can see it goes up by an extra six every time we put someone in. We're getting more money out of our trade goods now because... Well, we have ourselves a spaceport on pretty much every planet. One thing I forgot to do, which I really should have done, is go in here and get a report on the humans. This report gives us a tech review of all the technology they have. So, for example, we can see that they have the Dauntless Guidance System, Survival Pods, uh, Laser Rifle, this Planetary Missile Base. This is all, the, like, the ones that are highlighted are the ones we don't have. They have terraforming. We're going to have to start spying on them very soon. Uh, they also have Laser Cannon, that we don't have that, and they have Deuterium Fuel Cells. Huh. Uh, class 1 shields and space scanners. Uh, the thing is, class 1, uh, where is it? Laser cannons, laser rifle, and space scanner are all, we'll get all of those when we research that particular tech tree. So getting all of those is easy enough. Like, we can knock those out. So I probably won't start spying on the guy until we've knocked that out, which will be after we get iridium fuel cells. I want more distance. Uh, more distance means we can colonize further away planets. And I think we're going to take our battleship when it's done, and we're going to go knock out that Hydra. In the meantime, though, we're going to want to put in a Starbase or two, hopefully, uh, because... Actually, I might demolish some ships, just so that that battleship is going to have space to exist. Otherwise, it's going to eat into our fleet supply massively. Right, let's fast forward a bit. I want to take out that Hydra. I uh, finished training a new spy, Robo Miner next in queue of Starbase. Quick check in here to see if our housing is being productive, and lo and behold, it is. Uh, Lar, are you full? Uh, yeah, don't, don't send them there, then Lar's already full. We'll start heading to Lar 3. I really want to get those star bases up on Lair 3 and make sure it's well protected. It's just The humans aren't very powerful, uh, especially because they're mostly a tech-focused race, but we're still pretty weak at the moment because, well, of my obsessive focusing on making sure we have enough... Oh my god, this one's still coming around. If you don't accept it either, they keep going around, they do a ring around uh, all the others, and if they get rejected by everyone, they get amped up in abilities and then sent back around. Uh, we're going to reject them. Uh, our money is still going down. Give me another trade good person right there. Move the housing over to Lair 3 again. That, uh, six turns. I should probably get better engines to make that a little bit faster. But for now, I think we are good. That battleship at eight turns is going to be pretty game-changing. Ah, we should have better tech by then as well. We're actually running out of freighters. I need to queue up a few more of those. Okay, we'll have more freighters in a second. Someone's going to get a little bit starved, but that's okay. 
Uh, freighter fleet, starvation. We have more housing doing their thing. Uh, we're down to two freighters. I might want to leave that a second. <laughs> you always need more freighters. Just always. Uh, next. A defending spy was killed. They're already trying to spy on us. Uh, built a freighter fleet. Next in queue was freighter fleet. Finished construction of starbase. Next in queue is starport. That starbase gives us an extra command point over there, which is good. Uh, we're also running out of options on that food front. I think our next research is going to... I, I know exactly what our next research is going to be, actually. I'll get around to that in a bit. But first, we need to knock out the first research that's going on. Come on, give it to us. Uh, freighter fleet, construction of spaceport. This is going to give us a bunch more money. Namely because we're getting an extra plus five from the spaceport. Uh, we actually have some freighters freed up, so we'll send them over to Lar 3. Uh, how is our spies looking? Yeah, I'm going to need to queue up a few more of those, I think. I think once Lar 2 is finished building up, we'll uh, queue that up to do a few more spies as well. But in the meantime, let's keep going. 29% chance we knock out the research this turn. No, nope, not to be. We can also take a few people out of trade goods here. Uh, it's just we don't need them because we got that extra spaceport in a minute ago. Next. GNN. A violent earthquake kicked the colony of Cells IV, killing 6 million colonists in the Shacker Empire and destroying zero buildings. Basically, one of the other races out there, they got hit by an earthquake and it killed 6 million colonists, as in 6 of those little people things died. That's actually very painful. Uh, built a freighter fleet next to Q, a spy, and finished constructing a supercomputer. Right, I think you're... Yeah, you're finished. Actually, colony ship first. You see, what we want to do is build that destroyer, get the destroyer to go to Zib, wipe out the Hydra there. Once the Hydra is wiped out, that will give us access to uh, the planet, and then we can colonize it. Uh, I think the game's crashed. Uh, there, there's, there's no planet at Zib. It, it's invisible, or, or something's gone wrong, and I can't close or access anything. I'm going to have to restart. It, it came back. It came back. It recovered. Oh, yeah. You see, I want to grab Zib. Zib is a, a quite a jewel of a planet to get our hands on, so I would really like to knock that out, which is why we're building that destroyer. And when we knock out that iridium fuel cells, we're going to have far more range, which means we're going to start colonizing a bunch more places. So we're going to need ships to defend them, which is, well, why do we want to start building those cruisers? Now, that battleship is ready in three turns, colony ship in three turns, and then we'll send them both towards the uh, the correct planet. And food-wise, you're going to need to go there. Actually, wait, no. Start the shipping first. People in transit don't require food. Still one food short. Okay, fair enough. Oh, yeah. Please, please, please give us the technology. Yes! Iridium fuel cells knocked out. In that case, we want to go straight for soil enrichment. This means all our workers get plus one food. Or all our farmers will produce an extra plus one food. And combined with our government type, that should be an extra 1.5 food. Ah, we have met the Nolans. Ah, these are basically the Ferengi. They're traders, basically. Lots of money and things, they bribe, that kind of stuff. And they are way over here. Our ship range has just increased dramatic drastically. Namely because we just researched those iridium fuel cells. This guy doesn't have any uh, advanced fuel tanks. Do we still have that ship? Yeah, our scout's right here. And now that scout can reach much further. In that case, let's just start scouting. Battleship and colony ship will be ready in two turns. And what do we got? Finish trading new spy. Next in queue is spy. Yeah, rubble mining plant. Next in queue is starbase. Excellent. I'm going to cut out some of this transferring because honestly, there's just an awful lot of this transferring people. This, this strategy is very powerful, but it's just a little bit time-intensive. Next turn, colony ship and battleship will be ready to rock. And next in queue is spy. Yeah, and we got our two ships. Now you, you finished the colony ship. Battleship can go to Zib. Colony ship can also go to Zib. You'll arrive a turn after. Yeah, I'm pretty sure confident that battleship can kill this guy. Oh, actually, no. I want to upgrade him first. You see, if we go back to way where the battleship was produced, we grab this guy and we're going to go back to this battleship. Since we went up another tech level in chemistry, everything miniaturized. That includes the nuclear missiles. So the nuclear missiles, which used to be bigger, are now smaller, meaning we can add in more of them and make this battleship even, well, more powerful. Also, the missiles are cheaper now. And if we look at the Merculite missiles, before we didn't have access to ECCM fast or heavily armoured, but now we do because we've gone up a tech level in chemistry, which is where Merculite missiles were located. If we go up another tech level in chemistry, we will gain access to the uh, Mirv versions of the Merculite missiles also. So when you're getting missiles, you kind of want to get two levels beyond. Same with beam weapons. You want to get two techs beyond it, which makes planning, well, painful. And you usually have to commit really heavily to certain things. Hey, you. Uh, I want you to refit that battleship. And it should take one turn. 
So what it does, it takes in the battleship, it effectively disappears from your screen, and then once the production is complete, that's going to take, what, two turns? Oof, oh no, one turn. So in one turn, that battleship will refit. In which case, uh, you, we're going to send the colony ship all on its own. I mean, the, the, the battleship will be ready in one turn, and they'll both arrive at the same time. One other thing we want to take care of is uh, these empty destroyers. I should really refit them. Until we get around to building cruisers, they're our only defense, and I should really have them just, you know, not terrible. So, same again. Cram it full of uh, Merv ECM nuclear missiles, battle pods, uh, done. Then what we can do is we can refit one of these. Uh, you can start the refit of multiple ones, but when you do, the ships disappear, which is bad, because then the ships don't exist, which reduces your fleet power, which makes you look like a more tempting target. Uh, in the past, I did a massive refit at one time, and when I did, uh, the AI attacked me on that turn, or launched its attack on that turn, and then by the time it hit, my ships had all refit, but it didn't matter. They'd already launched their attack. Once they decide you're weak, they'll launch their attack, and it doesn't matter what you do then, so you kind of don't want to refit all your ships at the same time. You want to do it slowly. Eh, what do we got here? Yep, soil enrichment. Finally. Okay, that is vitally important. What I quickly want to do is knock out physics. These three here, you're supposed to get those really early on, and we've been very lazy about it. Uh, also, we want to start spying, and we don't want to accidentally spy one of those three techs, because, well, we need all three to knock out the tech, and uh, it's easier just to research it. Finish trading new spy, refitted a missile battleship, and a destroyer. Yep, you get refitted to a missile destroyer. Excellent. Finished building missile bat one. In that case, you can repeat build spies. We're going to need a lot of them. And done. The rest of you can go to research. Battleship. Time to head to Zib. The two of you will arrive with the colony ship, so we should be able to wipe out that thing and arrive. And leader. We have this guy. He can repair ships after combat. So we'll put him on the... Yeah, it'll take five turns for him to arrive. Yeah, that's okay. I think... Actually, yeah, once this is researched, we'll move back into the spying. But oh my god, money. Uh, yeah, we have a few too many ships going around the place. Uh, I'd almost get rid of some, but I don't want to. <laughs> so it sounds weird, but it's just a case of, uh, I want that scout, and I want those other ships to keep us safe. When's our next starbase coming online? Two turns. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, laser cannon, laser rifle, space scanner. So we knocked out all of those three techs. Now it's time to get on with the things. Since tech is king, and we do have some basic stuff going on, what we're going to want to aim for is auto labs. They're basically a building that generates 30 research points. That's it. You can build one on each planet, and you get 30 research points for each planet you have, assuming you can build an auto lab, and we can build. When it comes to these, emissions guidance is incredibly powerful. I never used this before, uh, early on, but once you realize the power of this thing, it's just insane. What it does is it requires four times as much space, but once you get past the shields, it bypasses all armor and structure and targets the engines, meaning you can get one of these up the tailpipe of a ship and it just pops it. Kind of like Star Wars type of thing. You know, you get it up the fuel exhaust thingy. However, we're going with a slightly different tack. We're going with Cyber Security Link. Gives a bonus to all spy rolls. We're going to be spying a lot. Oh, and the Range Master unit? This thing's incredible. Corrects for long-range targeting and accuracies, so basically divides range hit bonuses by three. So if you're aiming at something really far away, it's calculated as being, like, basically three times closer than it really is which makes it impossible to miss with beam weapons. Incredibly powerful. This is like a... Normally no one cares about Cybersecurity Link. It's only with this playstyle where I like lots and lots of spies. I'm basically going to strip mine technology out of everyone else. Ooh. Scouts just arrived at the Sarnath system, and it is abundant, to say the least. Uh, so we got two 8-pop poor planets that can both produce food, and two eight, an 8-pop eight abundant and a 10-pop abundant. Yeah, we're going to want to colonize that, aren't we? I think we're going to be going on another colonization spree very shortly. And in here you'll notice uh, Draconis is producing all of our food, and it is pretty much flat out, as in everyone's on food. We're going to put in soil enrichment. Soil enrichment will give us a plus 1.5 food for every single colonist, so we should be able to take a bunch of people out of this next turn. And the reason that's building instantly, even though we have no one in there to, pr to produce it, is because we had this uh, giant battleship sitting there soaking up all the production, and we do have an automated factory and a robo miner churning out enough production that when we drew in this, there was more than the 120 cost required already built in, ready to go, knocking it out. And also, I think it's time we did a wee bit of spying. Uh, what I like to do is just put an even amount on each one of them, and then as we add on more spies, we spread it out. Next turn. One last ship to refit. Uh, that's why I always change the pictures of ships when I uh, make a new, when I upgrade a design. The reason being is you can have a quick look and see which one is which without having to scroll over them. 
That will be the last one updated. Also, you can notice over here, our food has gone to plus 35. <laughs> That's soil enrichment for you. That means we can take a lot of people out of there. Uh, cool. Uh, you can go there and... Oh, all of our ships have... Oh, we researched the laser things and that refreshed all the ships. Damn it. That's annoying. Right, all the minor maintenance pieces have been taken care of. Uh, let's see what Zib holds in store for us when we arrive. It's been a while since I've done combat in this, but it should be... Ooh, okay. They hit us and stripped a bunch of the armor away. That hurt. However, our structure points are tripled because we brought reinforced hull, so it should take three times as long to get through that. You can scan your opponents and see what they've got. They've got three plasma breaths, which is a thing. Uh, these are, like, natural creatures, so it's weird. They also have energy absorbers, which allows them to absorb energy targeted at them. However, we're going to fire so many missiles, it should just straight up kill it. That's the hope. Oh. Those uh, arrows are just, uh, you can turn them on and off. There's a whole bunch of options in here for that. Show grids, missile warnings, all sorts of things. You can even self-destruct your ships. Very handy sometimes when you're trying to blow up enemy missiles. But uh, what we're going to do here is just fire at this guy. And you can see that blue line, that that's how far we can move. We, we don't want to move. We're just going to fire at that guy like that and then start turning to run away. Uh, we'll hit done. He'll fire us it again. The missiles move forward and hit him. Oh, so those ones fast. And select planet for colony ship. He's dead. Right. We have a new planet. Uh, welcome to Zib. And it comes with a bunch of food. Namely because of those, uh, three natives there. Those three natives are producing 18 food. They're consuming three of it. And this place is going to be the same. Automated factory, Robo Miner plant, Starbase. And from there we'll see. Uh, we just want to get this place reinforced because, well, I'm just pretty sure that enemies are going to want this planet. It's pretty tasty. We have completed our first combat. We have started spying, though we haven't actually managed to espionage anything yet. We, we can hopefully steal some technology off them soon enough. Uh, we can also send them to sabotage, and I've never figured out what hide is for. I think it's to stop them dying, maybe, or to... Uh, whatever. Espionage is pretty much all we're going to do, and we're just going to mass throw spies at people and make sure we grab all the texts that help us with spying. That should sort us out. Also, if we go under info here, we can check out race statistics and see that the humans are a democracy. That gives them a plus 50% bonus to their science, also increases their trade revenue, F plus two food production, and they're charismatic, which means, you know, people like them more. I mean, good for you. Uh, try and use your charisma on a missile, though. It doesn't really work. The Nolans are also a democracy, which they shouldn't be. It's just, since it's on maximum difficulty, they get a bunch of bonuses. So they get a plus 50% bonus to science, a plus one to scientific research on top of that, a bonus to their tax on top of the democracy bonus. That's mental. <laughs> Uh, low gravity is bad. That means they get uh, negatives to production on all planets that have, well, normal or high gravity. They get massive negatives there. Uh, the Grand Comet's terrible. Expert traders and they're lucky. They're actually pretty insane. And if we check the history graphs here and we check tech, we've actually managed to keep up with them. Despite all the tech bonuses, we've just thrown people at the problem and it's working. Well, people and buildings. Uh, Fleet-wise, we've now surpassed everyone. Uh, Building-wise, we're... <laughs> Yeah, we're miles everyone. And population wise, yeah, they're they're down here. We're up here. They're they're doing rather well, uh, considering the tiny population they have, but hey, the AI cheats a bunch. I'm gonna cut this out here for the day, but next up will be a second wave of colonization. We're gonna start churning out more colony ships. Lots of colony ships. Uh, there's in fact I have been kinda of sloppy here. There's a, a planet in here we haven't colonized that should be producing people, and there's another planet over here that we should colonize that should be producing people. We need to colonize those two. Uh, then we need to just, like, smash everywhere. Just colonize everything we can, and then probably missile swarm the uh, the closest people to us. But that, that will be for the next episode. I'm going to cut this out here. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.